I want to show you how we can use the free software GeoGebra to represent parametric equations. If you go to geogebra.org or you download the app for your phone or your tablet, you should get this as your standard screen. Now the first thing I want to show you is that GeoGebra does have the capacity to demonstrate parametric equations right out of the gate. So we can enter things like t comma square root t and it will show us that curve for a sensible range of t values. Now it's suggesting that t varies between minus 10 and 10 but we know that the square root of minus 10 isn't valid and yet it's not obvious what's going on here or why it's showing the values it is. What we can do is get a slightly clearer sense of what's happening by using a different parameter. So instead of t, we're going to use something different. I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to try a. a comma square root a. GeoGebra will recognize that a is a number and it's a number that we might want to change, but it doesn't automatically show us the entire curve. It allows us to mess with the value of a and then we can see that for negative values it doesn't exist, undefined and for positive values we can watch how it progresses. We can mess with this slider now it's been created or you can make your own slider by typing in slider and you'll notice that all of these uh, customizations can be done immediately. We are going to modify this. We can click here and change where we start and where we finish. So maybe we want to go from 0 to let's say 6 and we're going to make the step length 0 0.01 so we get a nice smooth motion. We can start at the beginning and we can watch the motion progress. If you get bored of the speed you can change the speed as it goes along. And at the moment the default setting is that the slider oscillates. If you go to the settings for the slider you can change that default up here where it says slider and then down here where it says repeat. We can make it increase and then when it's done increasing it'll increase again. So it goes up to 6 and then starts immediately from 0. That gives us a much clearer sense of what this curve does as A changes. There's another thing we can do with this that might be helpful to see. If you right click on the point you can choose show trace. This is also in the point settings. And then when we play we can watch on the graph a trace as if the point is drawing the line as it goes by. This is a temporary thing, so if you click and drag, you move your screen or you zoom in or out, you'll find that the trace disappears. So it's only going to be there while you're not messing with things. But it's really helpful to see if you're trying to get a sense of what the curve is doing. The next thing I want to show you is what happens with trig functions, because of course they're the most interesting. If we have sine a, Let's keep that square root a thing going on. So now we have something similar in the y direction, but in the x direction, think about what we're going to end up with. We'll do sine of something, which means the results are always going to be between plus and minus 1. You can get a sense, hopefully, just by thinking about what this is going to do, exactly where it's going to go. And we can change the settings for this point so that we show B settings show trace. Now as we watch, although B shares the same Y coordinate as A, the X coordinate is following a trig process. So it's varying between, it starts at 0, 1, minus 1. You can almost see the trig graph being drawn. It doesn't quite complete and that's because we only go up to 6 instead of 6.2 something. We can write 2 pi, pi, and GeoGebra will recognize that as being 2 times pi. And in this case we can see that B will get all the way to the end of its run before it starts again. If we want to see it go further, we pause the slider, we can mess with the values. So we might want to see it do two complete cycles before it goes back to the beginning. And you can see that the square root effect is causing our trig graph to um, concertina towards the end. Now we can get rid of these, hide them so they don't affect things if we like and then even though they're playing we don't see them on the screen. We can create a new point cos a sine a is a classic. If we think about what this point's going to do as we play 
because the x and y coordinates are both following a standard trig graph behavior between plus and minus one we end up with this lovely circle now you might think that changing the frequency shouldn't have too much of an effect and in some ways you're right it's still following a circle it's just doing it faster but what if we make cos 4a and sine remains just sine a so the y coordinate can change at a nice leisurely rate but the x coordinate will be changing according to cos 4a now remember if you do cos x the graph y equals cos x and compare it to cos 4x you'll notice that cos 4x represents a much higher frequency it's a stretch by a scale factor a quarter in the x direction which means that we should expect to see something a little crazy happening in the x direction we'll slow this down a bit we'll see if we can visualize the trace at the same time in the y direction we're moving up and then we start moving down and then when we get to the bottom we'll start moving up again but all that time in the x direction we're going left and right and left and right so the motion tends to be uh, affected fairly significantly by messing around with those frequency parameters you can also see how the curve is redrawing itself it gets to the end and it goes back over the same path depending on what we make this number for instance if we chose a three instead of a four we get a different sort of result it doesn't go back across the same path exactly it retraces itself but in the same direction and that's to do with odd and even values here you'll have to think about how sine behaves as cos behaves and we can of course change this one now we have cos 3a and sine 2a and this one ends up giving us an even stranger result in the y direction we have two cycles for each 0 to 2 pi and in the x direction we have three cycles for every 0 to 2 pi interval that we go through and that can give us all sorts of funky shapes if you're confused by all of this annoying tracery then of course you can go back to the standard parametric version type in open bracket cos 3t close bracket comma sine 2t and you can get rid of the trace if you don't want that anymore we can watch the thing moving but we get the best of both worlds because we can also see nice and neatly drawn the actual curve itself on the screen and that obviously doesn't disappear when we click and drag if you want to get really fancy we can ensure that maybe we forget that point but we want to create a parametric curve that we can easily vary so perhaps I'm interested not in this one particularly but I want to see what happens with cos of let's say k times t and sine of t this gives me a parametric curve but it also gives me a slider so the parametric curve is showing a standard 0 to 2 pi range but I can change the value of k and you can see for some values like this when k is 4.2 something awkward happens it doesn't quite meet up properly we might need to go to this and change the 2 pi to a greater range maybe 8 pi will show us more of what's happening and now if you force k to take only values that are let's say whole numbers so we make a step of one then you'll see the different possibilities shown to you one at a time and they all look reasonably neat they all meet up or they retrace their own steps but you can also explore what happens if you allow the step to vary a bit more smoothly and you get some fascinating results.